Hi, this is Debbie with Cheyenne, Wyoming Urban Gardener. This is part two of the late August garden tour. We're getting into fall now. Um, if you want, well, if you want to say it's getting into fall because we're still in temperatures of the upper 80s and close to 90. Today it's supposed to be 88. Yesterday it was 84. So we had a little bit of a break yesterday with the heat, but it has been just hot and I've gotten used to it at this point. So I'm not even paying attention much to how hot it's getting anymore. But we're supposed to be in the 90s in the next few days before it starts dropping down into the 70s according to the weather. And um, I think by the end of that 10 days it's going to be down to in the upper 40s at night. So then that gets into the point of where I have to look at whether I need to, to go ahead and harvest the cantaloupe that I have. And I'll show you those in a moment. Because in the 40s is when the plants will stop growing completely and maybe even start dying off. So I have my cantaloupes of course in containers. So let me go ahead and get out of the garden. We were looking at the cucumber that volunteered up as well as the cocazelle squash. All right so I'm out of the garden and of course we have one broccoli over here that still has not headed up because it is still smaller than the other two and it just ended up getting shaded out by my collards which have now been cut back so it'll probably start catching up here in a, in a little bit and we have a um, cauliflower here in the front as well next to the broccoli and this one is a snowball variety and it is trying to catch up with the others which are of course much larger this is still the cauliflower i did go ahead and leave it and i'm glad that i did because i want to update you on something and i showed you in the last video is that we do have some cauliflower coming on see that a nice cauliflower head and i don't see any in the other ones so far but if that one's producing then hopefully the other ones will as well or they have little ones down in there and I can't really see them because these are self-blanching. And the self-blanching cauliflower has leaves that will go over the top to keep the head white. Um, these have kind of opened up so I'll probably get it down in here with a rubber band and put the, a rubber band around those. So that is how you keep your cauliflower white because naturally cauliflower is a little bit more yellow. Um, or goldish color so the way that they get them white is that they fold the leaves these big leaves over the top and then they'll fasten a rubber band around the top and that keeps them from turning colors into other color than white so we still have the cauliflower in here I'm leaving it in I'm glad that I did and then of course we have some romaine lettuce right here between the cauliflower and it had a little bit of browning on it and now that has all straightened out as you can see nice pretty leaves it is kind of starting to go to bolt because it has been so hot in comparison with last season so um, it's still good right now it hasn't started seeding or anything like that but it is bolting so we'll start harvesting from that and then of course i still have a little bit of uh, collards left in here and I will be harvesting that to put in some mixed greens and get those canned up. Um, peppers are still looking fantastic. Of course, we still have the purple peppers in here. And then we have some green bell that was from the seed that I had saved out in the longer area. Let me zoom into that. And that was the seed that I had saved from a bell pepper and plant it out here. Um, I actually started them in seed trays and you see how beautiful those are. So, and those were, they were not organic. They were just a regular bell pepper that I had picked up at Walmart and saved the seeds out of. And you can see how beautiful that bell pepper is um, from that seed that I saved. So you can save your store-bought vegetables seeds and they will come out just fine um, that is a beautiful plant um, it only has one bell pepper on it right now but it does have a few coming on um, and it is still blooming so we'll see if we get enough weather out of uh, hot weather out of this to finish that on up and of course let me go ahead and get back into the garden I wanted to show you the Genovese squash 
um, which I have not grown in the past. This is the first season for that. And uh, it does look a lot different from my other zucchini, so I'm going to go out in here and show you what that looks like. So there you see it. That is a Genovese zucchini, and it's a lot more pale than my other zucchini is. My other zucchini is very dark green, or the Cocazelle, which is dark green with uh, some white striping. So absolutely beautiful Genovese squash. Look forward to harvesting that. It is big enough to harvest right now, but I want it to get just a little bit bigger. And then of course I still have my green beans row over here, the Blue Lake Pole beans. Still doing wonderful with the homemade trellis that we made in one of our previous videos. And I have loads and loads and loads of beans on these that I'm getting ready to pick here in a moment, as well as plenty of blooms and still continuing to produce beans. And they will until it frosts. So anyway, and here's another purple bell pepper back here, loaded with purple bell peppers. Oh, and I did just notice that that green bell pepper does also have another one on the back. So I didn't notice that. So there we go, yay. And then some more coming on. You can see those hanging there. And then that is the giant Marconi. The weight of the Marconi, because it has a few on it right now, pulled the plant over, but it is still doing and uh, going strong. So looking beautiful. And then, of course, I have a couple of more giant Marconi in here. And I have another purple bell pepper right there that is producing some more purple bells. And I am just loving those purple bell peppers. They are so, so pretty very solid color all the way throughout, very prolific, very good uh, bell peppers. And I've already pulled a couple off of those. And then we have another white acorn squash. I just noticed as I'm getting ready to step through the garden. Looking beautiful. And this is looking at the peas again. We have loads and loads and loads of peas in here. Still waiting for those to get completely finished so I can go ahead and just shell the peas instead of just using the pods because I have a couple of quarts of just pods inside with little bitty peas and these I want to go ahead and harvest the actual peas out of so I'm going to be shelling those but loads and loads and loads of peas in here right now um, I could start harvesting but I want the rest of them to catch up calendula doing amazing um, I think I need to start harvesting the heads on these because I did hear something about you need to deadhead these. So loads and loads of calendula in here that's blooming now. Still got plenty of heads coming on that haven't bloomed as yet. And then the zinnias looking gorgeous as well. They're blooming all over the place. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Loving it. And of course, another sunflower head up there, nice and pretty bloomed. And I'm looking at the beans everywhere I need to start picking. Of course, I have still have loads and loads of tomatoes still hanging. I've already harvested a few, as you've seen in a previous video of the super sauce tomatoes that were just massive. And a lot of these are a lot bigger than those. So I look forward to seeing what the weight on those is going to be. I still have my petunias blooming, very pretty over here. And I keep deadheading them so they still continue to bloom. Of course, I have another Cocazel squash tucked over here next to my roses. And this one is just now starting to produce some Cocazel squash. It has a very little one on it right now. This one just, it ended up being so shaded that it kept being small for a long time, but it is finally starting to really produce red curry squash I have a nice big red curry squash hanging everywhere in the garden now because they just kind of went everywhere there's one there and there's several more throughout I think you might be able to see one peeking out right in there right there it is that is the largest one and I uh, got another one over here and another one over there. There's just so many in here. I, it just would be impossible. And we've started harvesting tomatillos now as well. 
plants are massive. We've got tomatillos all over the place. You can see them hanging everywhere. And even the one that didn't have very many on it has now caught up and has just loads of tomatillos all over the place. So I'm going to be doing salsa verde and whatever else that I can do with these tomatillos. Um, I will not be having tomatillos next season. They're just not, I'm not a fan of the plants. Um, they kind of smell like dirt to me. <laughs> so not going to be looking forward to those anymore, but I will do what I can with them this season. We just ended up picking up the three of them just to see what would happen. Getting loads of cucumbers now. Of course, this is the cucumber trellis in ground because I have a lot of cucumbers also in containers. And I did pull my first white cucumber yesterday and slice it up and put it in a salad. It is delicious. I really like it. So very happy with that. And there's another one down in here right now. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it. There we go. There's a white cucumber down in there. They kind of look like a ball and then have little black spines. So a little bit different than the other cucumbers, but they have a wonderful flavor, very sweet, very refreshing. I liked it quite a bit and I don't really like cucumbers all that much. I just do pickles and things like that, but these cucumbers were pretty nice. So I still have loads of cucumbers that are coming on and blooming still happening. And uh, we have cucumbers hanging in there. There's one right there. And I have another one down in there somewhere. It's getting nice and big. Anyway, nice cucumbers. And then I have my beefsteak tomatoes right behind that, which are really suffering now from heat damage, I think. Um, anyway, I got a few of those that are starting to get ripe on the vines. And they're still producing even with the, the amount of damage that they have on them. And then, of course, I have my other green beans here, loads of green beans on them, and continuing to bloom and continuing to produce and will until frost. And we have peppers down in here. We have six pepper plants here, still continuing to produce, blooming and producing. We've got peppers all over them. And we have some cilantro or coriander behind that and it is getting ready to go to seed i'm going to be letting it go to seed so i can collect the seed off of those because i've already harvested leaves twice off of those the german queen tomatoes are now starting to get tomatoes on them i'm not sure that they will be ready in time because they still have a lot of growth to do but we do have a tomato here so you can see that one there that is on the german queen don't really like the plants, don't think they produce a lot, not happy with them. So I won't be doing those next season. And this other German queen has not produced anything, it's just blooming. And the Ot giant ox heart still looking like the best tomatoes that I have. Loads of tomatoes on them now and getting bigger by the second. There's some really large ones in there. And very, very happy with the Cherokee purple. I've had a lot of tomatoes off of that one as well as the Black Prince. Both of those seem to be pretty comparable to each other. And I've pulled a few off of those. And there's another of the super sauce tomatoes. You can see how many tomatoes it has on it. And it's still producing. That is the most prolific plant out of them. And here we have the Chianti Red Sunflower. Isn't that gorgeous? gorgeous gorgeous plants and the other ones are getting ready to bloom as well and they have loads of blooms on them and we're back again I'm sorry about that I um, had postman come or actually postwoman and uh, dogs were barking so I had to pause that for a moment anyway you were looking at the Chianti red and it's starting to bend over a little bit so I'm gonna have to tie it to the other two just to make sure it stays structured and all of the other sunflowers are getting ready to bloom looking beautiful and the potatoes still looking amazing and the gold potatoes are blooming now blooms all over the place and we have tahitian squash that has reached around all the way wrapping through and we have loads of tahitian squash now by the way um, there are a few in there that i have noticed that have gotten quite large looking around the 10 pound mark and getting bigger so 
Everything looking great there. Um, white pumpkin is down in here. Um, I have one. The other ones just kind of died off, and I'm not really sure what happened, but that happens sometimes. And there you can see the white pumpkin looking really pretty, getting nice and big. It looks like that one's going to be just fine. But I can no longer get back there to see the Tahitian squash because, as you can see, the squash vines have just gotten really massive. Potatoes, massive. So it's really hard to get back there now without stepping on something, so I just don't. Watermelons. I think I have watermelon in there. Probably getting pretty big, but I can no longer see it. <laughs> so anyway, um, Tahitian squash is basically in between the corn. Corn is doing wonderful. You can see some nice big ears that are getting ready there and there. All along the corn, all throughout there, of course, this is the peaches and cream. Hopefully they will be done by the time cold weather hits and I will leave these until cold weather hits because they still have a lot of catching up to do as far as production. Borage is definitely looking great. And loads and loads of Tahitian squash and acorn squash in here everywhere. Can't see it anymore because there's just the vines are so big. But you can see one of the Tahitian squash right here that's still pretty small. And they start out striped and then get their color later. Anyway, we're going to go into a part three.